In this week's video presentation, our group, the Melana Group, will be exploring the topic of taboos and local norms present within the Melana community. In today's increasingly modern world some of us may be slowly letting go of certain cultural beliefs and taboos. However it is still important to know how these traditions have shaped the many cultures that are found in Malaysia. Taboos, also known as Pantang Larang in Malay is a social sanction that controls the movements and actions of the Melana community. It can be said that the whole life of the Melana people including social, economic, death, marriage and pregnancy activities has a taboo. Refusal or failure to conduct accordingly may result in the person being harmed or suffering from a serious illness. In addition, the taboo that is practiced in all activities and stages of one's life is also aimed at avoiding being consumed with oaths or being subjected to delusions. Therefore, taboos based on offspring, disease, and life stages must be adhered to. Taboo is not to prohibit but to create a prosperous human being. If you look at all the taboos, it is extremely difficult for the Melana people to do their activity because they are restricted by the taboo they must obey. However, not all taboos are followed today. In this video we will be talking about several of the taboos that the Melana community follow within their local norms in their daily lives. To start with, let's look into their birth taboos during and after pregnancy. There are no specific customs practiced by pregnant women in the Melana community but they are also bound by the prohibition of abstinence. They are also prohibited from eating certain foods which will be explained later on in this video. This prohibition is not limited to the pregnant woman alone, but the husband is also required to abstain from certain matters. The husband cannot cut stacked wood or for fear that the child would get a cleft lip. The husband also cannot paint because it is feared that the child in the womb will be covered by oil. The husband also cannot see any events of death because the child in the womb will get a disease. During pregnancy, the woman is not to be feared because then it is feared that it will cause the child to be defective or fall apart. After the mother gives birth, the villagers and relatives will visit. They usually bring presents together. The Melana community is also prohibited from praising newborns. Instead, it is preferred if the baby was said to be ugly and so on. After childbirth, the mother is required to dry her body in the womb and cannot eat carelessly. Anyone wishing to stay in the house should stay for three days. Food and household items cannot be borrowed or taken out, otherwise the child will fall ill or die. During the same period, the father is not allowed to hold the child after returning from the forest or back from the sea because the smell of the sea and the forest still clings to his body, which can affect the child's health. For baby girls, when they are young, therefore it is flattened with a device called jack. This is to beautify her forehead. This process has become a unique identity among the Melana community. The flattening process takes place within the first month after birth. An apparatus known as Toddle or JA is utilized for this purpose. A toddle or jack or a pick consists of a stout flat wooden bar about 24 cm long and 9 cm wide. On the middle part of the bar is fastened with a soft pad which applied to the infant's forehead. A strap made of soft cloth in a T-shape and is attached with a pair of strings which pass through holes at both end of the bar. The strings are brought together on the front of the bar and pass through the center of a copper coin or a wooden disc at the middle of the bar. The apparatus is applied while the child is asleep and is at once relaxed if the child wakes up or cries. The degree of pressure is gradually applied by twisting the coin round and round. The application normally lasts for 15 minutes on each occasion but in successive days. Depending on the pressure, 10 to 20 applications seems to suffice to bring about the desired effect of a moon-like face which is most admired. Now we will be talking about the marriage taboos of the Melana people. Marriages in the Melana community contain a number of ceremonies that are highly valued because of the social implications they have. Aspects of rank are more emphasized in marriage institutions than in other institutions. The Melana people are also very concerned about their social status of 9 pence, 7 pence, and 5 pence. Nah, muka kita memang masih menggunakanlah ada tuh 
dia ada ada tuan tujuh pikul sembilan sembilan pikul lah dia ada beza dan setiap setiap hantaran tu dia akan berbeza ikut dia punya pangkat lah tujuh dengan sembilan jadi yang uh, apa yang tujuh sembilan pikul tu tu dia macam ada pepatih lah Ha, macam ada pepatih tu dia, dia tapi yang tujuh yang biasa yang biasa orang biasa yang sembilan tu orang kira yang atasan lah ha, jadi dia setiap uh, tujuh dan sembilan dia ada beza lah hantaran dia The types of goods and gifts that need to be taken for engagement and the items accompanying the dowry such as custom grooming custom bowls and feeding are also calculated based on this social status In Melana society Marriages of the same social status are known as gera. Marriages between couples with different social status are known as custom eunuchs. The male representative visits the female family home to determine the social status of the female family and to determine if the girl has been engaged. If the girl has not yet been engaged, he will ask if the girl can be wed and what is her dowry. On the day that both men and women have agreed, it is customary to sign the fiancé a representative of the male family. Some men and women of age will hand over the dowry items such as a gold ring, a weapon, a rice paddy, one coconut and one pound of copper. Dan selalu dia upacara ni, uh, dia akan bermula dengan ada meminang lah. Ada meminang tu yang biasa dia satu biji kelapa dengan satu gantam padi. Lepas tu dalam dia ada letak satu buku cincin lah untuk tunangan lah. Okey, itu yang basic dia. Sama lah dalam tujuh ataupun sembilan yang sama. Dia punya hantaran kahwin saja yang berbeza. Okey, dan acara dia selalu uh, uh, boleh tiga hari lah. Kalau uh, dulu lama juga, yang sekarang biasa dia tiga hari lah. With the delivery of the goods by the male family representative and accepted by the female family representative then the engagement is officially opened. Both parties must abide by the terms agreed upon. Wedding ceremonies are held on a large scale except for a paramus type wedding which is a per wedding due to being premarital relations. Preparation for this event takes place a few days in advance. The groom will be required to give the dowry gifts, cheers and gifts and other gifts such as custom grooming, custom bowls and feeding the day before the ceremony. The handover was followed by a wedding. The wedding can also be held the next morning which is the day of the wedding. The wedding ceremony was held at the home of both the bride and groom attended by relatives, neighbors and best friends. After the bridal party, The competition is held at the bride's house for a customary dress, which was the delivery of various items, including a gold ring and a silver bracelet by the groom to the bride. While undergoing this custom, both brides are charged with various taboos. For example, they cannot bathe in the river and cannot sleep during the day. On the seventh day, a ceremony was held to free them from the taboo imposed. This abduction ceremony also aims to throw into the sea any plague or catastrophe that threatens the couple. This ceremony is more of a fun ceremony that takes place along the beach. The next taboo is the taboo surrounding death. The death ceremony is an important event in accordance with the faith of the Melana people. Death should be dealt with best by adhering to certain customs. The Melana people also believe that if a person dies, the deceased must be assisted in his journey to the hereafter or called the death of the dead. This help is in terms of mourning, feasting and so on. In the event of death, the body will be bathed first. This will be done by their immediate family members. Next, the corpse is dressed in beautiful clothes along with ornaments such as beads and jewelry. For women's bodies, the fabric of sebaber, the fabric accepted as a wedding gift, will be placed together. The corpse will be placed on a pack, which is a dead body made of boards and fallen branches. 
This place will also be covered with bamboo mats and topped with a blanket. The Melanau community must follow some taboos after their family members passed away. According to their belief, the Melanau people would hold a singing ceremony, a song related to death and birth. Singing times vary by gender, which is seven days for men and five days for women. In addition to the above ceremonies, the Melanau community also has to mourn the death of the deceased for about 12 to 15 months. During this period, family members are required to wear black and worn hats to prevent any adverse events. Another important taboo for the Melanau people is the monthly taboo. This translates to Bulan Penjjin which means the month of the spirits. This month coincides with the Gregorian month of March. During this month, it is windy and the rain comes down in light showers in the beginning. This is a time when it is difficult for the Melana to go out to work because of the strong wind, thus they will spend their time cleaning the tools and equipment of their trades. This is the time that they mark as the beginning of the year, the first month of Penjjin. At the end of this month, they will purify themselves and call the fish out from their lairs, from the beaches and the river mouths. This ceremony is called Kaal by the Melana. During this ceremony, they would construct a huge swing called Tibu and sing the Tibu mantra during its construction, seeking the blessings of their guardian gods for plentiful flowers, bountiful harvests of fruits and that there be plentiful fish in the sea for them, and that illness and afflictions be removed and all evil to be returned to their own place. They will also send offerings called Sirahung out to the sea to appease them and invite them to partake their feast with them. After the feast, all food and drink is left by the shore for the guardians and spirits to take with them. None is to be taken back for it is meant to be the feast for the spirits and guardians. Food Taboo Hashim Awam, in his article entitled The Treatment of Medical Nutrition in Order Theory of Society and Culture concluded three matters related to nutrition and food. First, food and drink is one of the basic human needs of biology. Even so, food also has a cultural meaning because something that makes it not only has nutritional value but also aesthetic and symbolic values. Second, not all ingredients can be made by humans. Only certain ingredients are eaten and the selection depends on the culture. Third, taboo is applied to certain foods to ensure that they are not consumed for the benefit of the public. Clearly food taboos exist in our culture. No matter Melanos or Malay. Prohibition on food is one aspect of culture that has unintended health values. It is possible that prohibition on food at one time was based on pragmatic fundamentals and its value was not understood by the next generation but also continued to be practiced. For example, taking too much salt during pregnancy has the benefit of reducing the possibility of hypertension and water retention in the female body and this reduces complications during pregnancy and childbirth. Although the value and benefits of health are clearly defined, culture provides its followers with information and skills that can be used by the community to maintain health. The Melanau community is rich in the taboo of food that has been passed down through the ages. Prohibition of food is prohibited at certain times, especially at critical times of life such as illness or during life-threatening conditions such as childbirth. Restrictions also apply when an individual is in a liminal state between two worlds such as adolescents and adults. This liminal state implies that one's social position is intact. This condition can cause social stress that can interfere with an individual's health. Taboo of regularity refers to a food that is not allowed to be eaten under any circumstances or inheritance. The Melanau people have a forbidden diet inherited from their ancestors. They practiced the taboo to this day because they believed that if the taboo was abolished, disaster would ensue. The taboo on heritage is considered to be a oath of the ancestors, in that they cannot eat certain animals, for example some of the Melanau people in Muka do not eat sharks, deer, seagulls, Bears, bearers, and tigers, if eaten can be mentally defective or exposed to an incurable disease. This taboo is related to events that had happened to their ancestors in the past and caused them to be sworn into the beast. There were also animals that helped save the ancestors. 
In return for not being sworn or devoured by the ancestors of the past, the Melanau community had to obey the taboo or ban imposed on them. From its implementation, the prohibition of these foods differs by gender. Women are often more likely to be banned from food than men. For men, abstinence from dietary restrictions is an idealization, for example, to maintain their ability and sexuality. Men are also discouraged from drinking coconut water because it is believed to weaken their inner strength. This clearly represents a preventive behavior. Food taboo due to inheritance or family lineage. Most people in Melanau have food taboo because of their heritage or descent. This objection stems from the oath made by the ancestors of a family. This oath does not allow descendants of a family to eat certain foods for certain reasons. They believe that if this prohibition is not followed, something bad will happen. Therefore, in order to avoid any catastrophe or disease, they follow the prohibition. There are some families who refuse to eat certain types of fish and seafood such as shrimp, squid, and crabs. There are also families that cannot eat animals in the wild, such as antelope, deer, pigeon, and white-breasted water hen. For example, Kak Masna's family should not eat stingray fish. If eaten, it is believed to have bloated stomach. This belief is linked to the story of their ancestors who had been rescued by a stingray during a shipwreck at sea. As a token of appreciation for the fish, the descendants of Kak Masni are not allowed to eat stingray fish. In addition, Masni's family also cannot eat grainy deer, which is believed to cause itching. If eaten, to cure it should be taken from the deer's skin and applied to the whole body. Beliefs about such an oath are still strong among the Melanau community in Sarawak. They were so careful in their food so that they would not be misunderstood and then become miserable. Food taboo due to beliefs There are also food restrictions that are influenced by the beliefs of a society. Belief in something that will happen if it is not obeyed. According to the Melanau community, Children are prohibited from eating crabs and catfish to avoid skin disease. Children are also not allowed to eat buah bilan. This is because the Melanau community believes that buah bilan may cause girls to die in adulthood, whereas for boys, it is likely that they will die of drowning or crocodile. Food taboo during pregnancy Food taboos for Melanau women are about the same as most other people, especially Malay women. Prohibition of dietary restrictions during pregnancy is intended to safeguard the health of the mother and the safety of the baby. In the early stages, pregnant women should be careful and refrain from eating foods that are hot and sharp because they are believed to harm the developing fetus. For example, pineapple, tapeworm, sugar cane, and durian can cause miscarriage. After the early stage, Pregnant women are free to eat whatever they like as long as the food is allowed and good for their health. In addition, pregnant women are not allowed to eat jackfruit and sempadake, because it is believed that they might suffer difficulties when giving birth. This is because the skin of both fruits are hard and thick. In addition, jackfruit is also believed to cause headaches after delivery. Cooked papaya is also not allowed to eat because it is believed to cause ripening. Eating poultry is also believed to cause the baby to have headaches, sore eyes, diarrhea, open mouth, and stomach aches. In general, pregnant women are prohibited from eating very sweet and sour foods. Most taboo from food is obeyed because of the devastating effects it is believed to have on those who violate it. During pregnancy, the spouses are required to maintain girth and behavior to avoid breaching obstructions that may affect fetal development. Particular prohibitions must be followed to prevent the abuse of supernatural powers or delusions on pregnant women and the fetus. For example, spouses are not allowed to eat stingrays because they are afraid of children born with chipped lips. In addition, they are not allowed to eat fish that are banned because it may cause their child to suffer from constipation or insufficient milk. In addition, Pregnant women are also not allowed to eat deer, turtles, and turtles as they are believed to complicate the delivery process. 
Food taboo after childbirth. The condition of women in postpartum is different. They are more food taboo they need to obey. Careful postnatal care is crucial to speeding up the recovery process. In the early weeks of childbirth, women in the womb are encouraged to eat dry foods for the purpose of shrinking the uterus. Spicy, fatty, and overly greasy foods are not eaten. The midwife says the goal is to avoid the pain of losing her smoothness and not returning to its original state. Drinking too much water can also cause veins and bloom. Health, well-being, and nutrition during abstinence are important and must be prioritized so that recovery can occur quickly. Women in abstinence are forbidden to eat cold food because they are exposed to cold due to blood loss during childbirth. Blood is considered a hot element. They are encouraged to eat hot foods, such as spices and tree roots. This prohibition is not baseless. According to the Melanau community's worldview, cold foods can cause swelling, lochia discharge. They cannot eat smelly fruits, shoots and vegetable shoots, sponges, nail shoots, crabs, squash, sweet corn, sweet potato, cucumbers, sponges, coconuts, Apples, pineapple, rambutan, young coconut water are believed to cause headaches, while jackfruit and petals can cause bloated stomachs. Melana women also believe that some foods contain elements of itch. Seafood, such as crabs, squid, and some types of fish are classified as food that causes itchiness and even fishy smell. Also, seafood is challenging because it can cause the wound to heal slowly. Other foods include gluten causing bloated stomachs and balakin. While for breastfeeding women, they are not allowed to eat durian as they are believed to have hot fever and sneezing, which includes sore eyes, tongue twitching, open mouth and stomach aches. Dandelions, plums, and queen eggs can cause milk to heat up and endanger the health of the baby. In addition, all kinds of shoots. Sweet potatoes and fruits are inedible because they are believed to cause cold, sour milk and cause stomach ache. Infants are also not provided with seafood such as crabs because they are believed to cause head injuries and fish as they fear their skin becomes white spots when they grow up. Postnatal health care is very important. The mother's body needs emotional and physical recovery before being ready to conceive again. All dietary restrictions imposed on women after childbirth are intended to maintain health and accelerate the recovery of maternal and infant health that is now fully dependent on the mother. If a woman is suffering from food shortages and her health is poor, it can take longer to recover. Prohibition on food for 44 days Some have practiced abstinence for 100 days so that their internal organs are perfectly healthy. Food taboo during illness In addition to food taboo from food during pregnancy and after childbirth, food taboo is also applicable to someone who is ill or in treatment. Restrictions on food intake depends on the type of illness. The period of abstinence should be followed to prevent reoccurring disease. Each of their traditional treatments is also accompanied by a certain food taboo. Prohibition of dietary abstinence during treatment has two purposes, in addition to preventing recurrence of the disease, it is also intended to accelerate healing. For example, Kak Masna's son, suffered a sudden swelling of both legs, and after receiving traditional treatment, he was forbidden to eat shoots. To date, her son still has not dared to eat tubers for fear of recurring swelling. Some may have to refuse food because they follow the advice of their doctor, for example Aunt Kisa has to refrain from eating certain food after being diagnosed with diabetes and hypertension. There are also informants who refrains from eating onions and meat because of chiropractic diseases after getting traditional treatments. That concludes our video for the local norms and taboos of the Melana tribe in Malaysia. We hope that this video has been eye-opening helpful and interesting. We hope that this video inspires you to be more appreciative of indigenous cultures in Malaysia, and advocate for their preservation. Thank you for watching and listening to this video, goodbye.